Hi everybody, guess what? Today is Caribbean Literature Day and we're celebrating right here with the NGC Bocas Lit Fest. My name is Rokas and to kick things off today, we're going to have Stand and Deliver. You know Stand and Deliver, right? Because we do it every year inside the NGC Bocas Lit Fest. So now we're bringing it to you in the comfort of your own home, your own car, your cell phone, wherever you are, we're bringing it straight to you. And because we're celebrating Caribbean Literature today, we're going to kick things off with poetry from right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Introducing Mr. Harold Smart. If only I had wings. If only I could but grow wings, I'll grow them. So that I will be able to fly far, far from the pressures of this living to the pleasures of a giving of my soul. Fly I would to where my heart will have all that it can hold, where it will beat just to do that which to it is true, where from dawn to dawn, including sleep, this heart will not weep. To ease the frustrations, to drown the tribulations of this living, this existing without doing, free from pressures, that which it seeks to do. If only I had wings to fly into the sky where my feet or my car can't carry me, where the world, the air will not weigh me down. I will go where my living will be real, where the ideal will not only be found in a dream, and I will not have to scream. Stop the world, let me off. I cannot go on fighting, though in me the fighter remains, somewhat wasted, full of pains and bloody stains, from battles well fought, well lost on this plain, where there is little satisfaction to be had. Lord, oh Lord, it's too bad. This living without giving is too sad. This working, that's just doing a job. This existing, that's just searching for a dollar, making the job required. Of it all, I am tired. Yet I dare not fire or be fired, for I am a perfect captive of the soulless way we people live. Oh, if only I had wings, if only I had the willpower to soar to the tallest tower, free in the air, away from despair, to smile at the sun and know that I am free, free from the pressures of this living without giving, free from paying debts I do not owe. We are tired of being robbed. We are tired of being robbed. They've stolen our history. They've sullied our name, broken our spirits, robbed us of our dignity, our gold. They want it all. They forced us to hide, but no more. We're tired of being robbed. The system has taken too much from us giving us new names and narratives, giving us lashes on our backs with whips and chains. First the planter, now the cops. Once again, they've arrested us. We demand change. The system has taken too much. We're tired of being robbed. The system has taken too much. They've stolen our history from us. They've sullied our name, given us new names and narratives, broken our spirits, given us lashes on our backs. 
robbed us of our dignity with whips and chains. Our gold, they want it all. First the planter, now the cops. They forced us to hide. Once again, they've arrested us, but no more. We demand change. We're tired of being robbed. The system has taken too much. Hi, I am Dex Gomez and I'm the author of Diary of King Michael Anthony Life and Love Notes. I'm a first time author and this piece that I'm going to read is entitled Prisoner. It was inspired by caring for my critically ill mother before she passed away. Prisoner, I see you suffer. I cannot tell if this is your karma or mine. Have past sins finally caught up to you or are you just a victim of circumstance? Solitary confinement, imprisoned in a body that is failing you, tortured by thoughts, your pleas go unheard. I stand and gaze through your windows. I silently pray for your freedom. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Dex Gomez, as we continue to celebrate Caribbean Literature Day. We want to change things up and spice things up a little bit. Let's head to a story about Carnival. Celeste Rita Baker. Take it away. I am Celeste Rita Baker, and I'm going to read a story for you called Single Entry. Carnival time come, and I a single entry. I'm not in any troop or nothing. I just parading in my costume all by myself. Everybody asking me what song that is, and where my music coming from. I tell them I write the song, which is true. And it coming from my iPod and these little speakers that I have ringing me North and South Poles which not true. I project in the song from the core. They don't need to know that. The sun hot, just like I like it, and no clouds dress in the sky. The crowds of people is like from before, when the people didn't used to be afraid of crowds. All the children them being told to keep still, but they can't, from all the excitement in the air. Grown folks drinking all kind of rum and eating with their fingers. Water and ice giving way for free, to keep people from passing out in the heat. The music blasting, bumping and blaring so as to make the ground shake. Heart and hips can't help but keep the beat. The groove growing to encompass all of them like wet cover water. Single entry mirage. I was everybody and everything. I was the whole friggin' planet. The globe, I'm telling you. The world dancing on two feet. Of course, you couldn't self see my feet and I ain't touched the ground. On Main Street, the people push back, push back to make me pass. Everyone grinding upon one another. It smiles, cheers, and waves. The children hush quiet with awe. The grown folks try rushing me, trying to touch me to see if my water wet. Try to find the string between the sun and me and the moon and me. See how a cloud, what seemed to be above cruise, could have the frangipani trees dripping on old to two. How I bright where the sun reach and dark when I turn around. You like it, eh? When I reach the square, it's blow or blow up. Before, I was around 25 feet at the equator, but I was 50 by the time I reached the judge's stand. Old lady stinking toe petals dripping from me instead of sweat. Jasmine petals drifting in the breeze, scenting the whole square. I have volcanoes up erupting on the base and trade winds blowing loud like horns. Earthquakes trembling the drums. I is the earth song, you see? Eyes the earth and they loving me. The crowd gone wild. They never see nothing so. The ocean sloshing and rock city really rocking. Cameramen zooming in, capturing a single live guana stunning on Coral Bay. Let them look, they look. We all here. Every tree, rock, stone, and flea. I could dance too, you know. And not only spin, but me bouncing so high and does take quite a while. Every now and again, I just let off some sparks in the air, stars burning bright. They loving me, and I loving them too, feeling all the little souls tickling me, tickling me, and I'm so glad. 
When time comes to move on, I shrink down to fit again. Less people here, and they're more watching each other than me. I feel in a little pains, like a drilling, and a cutting, and a breaking up. And I shrink in faster than I want, and I can't stop at all. Time I pass Joe's bar, I hardly the size of a big car. By senior citizens' viewing stand, I could have fit into a black plastic garbage bag. On the way to the field, the people them clap and smile, but I could tell they seem too much already to pay any mind to me. It's the crowd energy that had let me blow up so, make all my beautiful intricacies flow. And now, only a few people studying me, and I drip in and lose in form. Mud sliding and whales beaching. I turn off and head back to the parking lot to go have a drink. Well, sir, I can't self-see the counter. I smaller than a greedy man dream, and I can't make no arms again neither. People tripping over me, cussing, and it's smaller and smaller I get in. Little boy try to pick me up like I was a toy throw away in the gutter. I make thunder, but he ain't here. The most I could get up is a little piece of lightning, and he dropped me. I roll under a table and hunch up next to the table leg. Parade done. Sun gone down. People streaming into the village for last lap. Last drink, last dance, last chance to have big fun. Everybody in a frenzy to get and to have. Nobody ain't see me. I hear them talking about me. That single entry, so pretty, so magical. Sure she gonna win. And I did it. Kick under the bar, huddling in the dark. Rum and hot grease dripping down through my mountains. Hi there, my name is Nicholas Gilbert and I'm the author of Equivers Poetic Expression. It's available at Amazon.com in paperback copies as well as the Kindle copy. So be sure to visit Amazon and get your copy today. I want to share with you a piece entitled Obscurity. Into the darkness again, but I just wanted to be your friend. I wanted to wait, but soft man, sissy and wimp taunted me, haunted me with nightmares of guys and girls with long laughing faces, discolored teeth like dirty white shoelaces, piercing me in the face, piercing me with their sarcastic laughter. Oh, the pain I felt and the horror. I did not want a teenager's shame looking at me in a mirror. I did not want to, but my courage punctured. I saw you smile and thought that you too would think that I'm soft. Then I became hard, vibrant and strong I stood. A symbol of my manhood. Sexualized but also demoralized. So like soft surf ice cream I quickly melted. Melting, running down under your garments. To explore the forbidden garden before the time was right. But when you kissed me back, I thought that was the signal go. So like a race car driver, I accelerated and dragged off your attire. Shifting gears until I crossed the line. But instead of checkered flags were guilt-filled eyes. I never wanted to hurt you. You were never rejected. I left because I felt dejected, disappointed by my ungodly act. The guilt ran down my forehead like a footballer's sweat. I wanted to save sex for marriage, but now a sinner's guilt the courage that drove me away from you. Both of us were young and wanted to bask in untainted fun. Contaminated by our perception that our love was pure for one another. We both wanted to fulfill our fantasies and make porn movies our realities. But with the sex came responsibilities for which we were never ready. We played Dolly House with love. And before the game was over, 
we consummated, cells copulated, and we both became one. We participated in a production not like a movie producer, but wearing the hats of a manager, of a product that's so valuable. But we both failed in our own ways and in oblivion. I sailed east and you sailed west until nine months later you sailed east again. Reminded me of the game we played and wrapped in a blanket was no Barbie. I could remember the colour of the blanket holding our blood. But I was tormented, so I hunted for solution that was like a jaguar. Too fast for me to catch my school, my future. I felt tormented by the game we once played, but sex is no child's play. Now instead of book bag, I carry work bag, the price to pay for child's play. I know you enjoyed that spoken word piece there by Nicholas, so we're going to keep it moving. Nicholas is from Trinidad and Tobago. Let's head to Anguilla. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Patricia Adams. Tis the common man that pick the fruits in shabby suits, pluck ears of corn, come early dawn, butcher the meat for we all to eat, and cook the meals so we body heals. Tis the common man who make the great in every state, without he little dollar, no tie, wrong boss collar. There's no high seat if he ain't beneath, unless he vote, no salute to the ruler coat. Tis the common man who fight in the war on shores afar, sail hilly seas, inhale the salt breeze. He spill he blood and don't say a word, and when he die, he own blood cry. Tis the common man who conquer mountains and erupt fountains, study the skies with watery eyes, who invent music and then abuse it, play happy games with funny names. Tis the common man, tis the common man who boasts and brag, we have a flag, endure mayhem to sing an anthem, suffer persecution to write a constitution, who unite as one to bring kings down. Tis, tis, tis the common man. Everyone, I'm Vashti Baula and I'm delighted to read a brief excerpt from one of my stories titled Oh My Papa. He related one of the most exciting stories while walking me to school one morning with our loyal Pothung trotting behind. He told me about the shopkeeper who had sent a proposal for him to marry his only daughter and how his life changed that day. His parents accompanied him to the shopkeeper's house where they sat on a bench in the front shed waiting to see his daughter. But then a young beauty walked into the yard towards the shop. Her eyes were as round as her face and her raven black hair was windswept under the afternoon sun, forming natural curls cascading down her back to her slender waist. Her light skin was radiant in a yellow polyester dress with red hibiscus prints scattered about. The skirt billowed out behind her and her slippers flip-flopped noisily as she walked. She bought a small tube of toothpaste and a beauty soap. He couldn't take his eyes off her and swore that she smiled back at him. He knew right there and then that she was the one he wanted to marry. He turned down the shopkeeper's proposal without waiting to see his daughter. The shopkeeper chased his entire family out of the yard, reaching nearby for a grass knife that was hanging on a nail 
brandishing it as he ran after them. All your young boys don't know a decent girl when you see one. You go sorry you ever refused my daughter. Because you go never get a good girl like she. Just watch what I'm telling you. The neighbor they had hired to transport them was waiting in his new Oxford Morris and started the ignition when he saw the commotion. They all dived into the vehicle and when they were a safe distance, his mother rang his ear and gave him a good tongue lashing. You better have a good reason for what you do, eh boy? Because you gonna be lucky to get a wife now. My father wasn't bothered. He made inquiries about his mystery girl and set out to convince her family that he was the perfect husband for her. He wasn't prepared to take no for an answer. The next Sunday afternoon, he borrowed his brother's rally bicycle and rode out of Tamarind Lane through Sugarcane Valley and almost to the end of Cedar Village. He identified the girl's house along Sacodilla Road and slowed down, stealing a glance in that direction. Her father was laid back in a hammock in the front porch reading a newspaper with his legs folded while her grandmother was sitting on a bench chopping up green mangoes and dropping the slices into a white enamel bowl. They were eyeing him with scrutiny, so he rode past the house, then turned around and rode by again. He stopped in front of their house and leaned forward, pretending to check the chain and pedals. Tara, come and see if you know this young boy in front here. He looking like he lost. Her grandmother's voice was much more powerful than her petite frame. The object of his quest appeared and spoke to the older woman, both looking directly at him. She moved towards the banister, twirling a strand of her long hair between her fingers. He was spellbound as their eyes locked. He was running out of ideas and with his heart rate readily increasing, he didn't have time to catch his breath. He steadied himself on the bicycle, turned around and rode by again, leaning the bicycle sideways so it came crashing to the ground, throwing himself with it. It was only while he lay on his back with his head halfway into the drain and feet tangled in the bicycle that he realized he hadn't thought this plan through. Hi, I am Kamasha and this piece is entitled Venting. I love my homeland, but lately I've been asking myself, does she love me? Ever since I was a picnic, I've pledged my love to her. As a matter of fact, I pledge my love, my loyalty and skills, but lately it feels like this wasn't a good idea. Cause Things brown like the water in the tap after it rains and I don't need to tell you it's a shame or disgrace considering I'm supposed to use this to wash my face or my sacred place. This economy rough like the gouache my granny used to have. Aspiring hopes and dreams get dismembered like a freshly cut the word. Even Porto writes bawling about how things bad I say hmm what a thing lad. Frustration is evident by our dwindling population. Better must come equal migration. Authorities talking about being a resilient nation, but it's a bag of chat, like a radio station. Every five years we have fed promises. Politicians riding on the backs of the people's vulnerabilities. In the presence of greed, always the same set to succeed, so success cannot be measured by one's effort. I used to think that David and Goliath was mere biblical history, but daily financial Goliaths fighting with people's tiny salary has changed my notion completely. Public servants are urged to cease and desist from asking for salary increase, yet minister's salary doing the frog leap and skip. Now, ain't that some ish? Big up to every farmer who tills the earth. I appreciate your work, value your worth. 
But Ministry of Agriculture, don't give a heck about you. Poor feed rose and insufficient market is not exactly equal to profits. I beg you, stop it. Ministers take frequent trips to various countries and return them without implementing anything positive. And I'm certain they witness means for improvement, but what's the rush? They're already in government. When will the populace realize that we are the ones who matter and quit selling our votes for mere bread and butter? Because at the end of it all, we are the ones who suffer. Every ghetto youth, your ex has power, exercise your right to fight by the stroke of your finger. Because when it's said and done, all our we go through this term, and it's always the bottom of the pot that get born. I know this piece won't sit too well with some folks, but someone has to say it. Consider me the scapegoat. And if for some reason you are offended by one line, then do better for this country of mine. I know you're enjoying yourself inside Caribbean Literature Day here with the NGC Boca Slit Fest, and by rights, you deserve to. And you know what's one of the best parts about this is that it's virtual, right? So all of our writers who would normally get stage fright, they can sit at home and record these and deliver them to us. So they can sit and deliver, they don't have to stand and deliver. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just playing. All right guys, let's head across to see what Princess is up to. Princess Lois, take it away. There is a place in my head. I call that place Euphoria, where everything is light and funny, and there's no constraints of reality. There is a place in my head. I use that place to cope when life is gray and gloomy. This place gives me hope, or at least an escape for a while. This place, it makes me smile. There is a place in my head where I react to conflict in ways that appeases my id and my ego no need to worry about what happens tomorrow there is a place in my head where my jokes are never offensive where my humor is pre-understood and i am already accepted there is a place in my head where there are no lost faces where mortality is a myth and the ones that I've loved and lost are no longer in mahogany cases. There is a place in my head where karma works so much faster and the ones by whom I was wronged are filled with regret soon after. There is a place in my head where giving a true opinion does not equate to losing a friend because this is my dominion. There is a place in my head where if I so desire on birds I can ride to the heavens I've flied and from up close the stars I admire. There is a place in my head where colors are abundantly brighter and my troubled, insecure self. I have no need to fight her because there she's peacefully asleep and only good things I can reap. There is a place in my head where without regret, I can be my most open, my most honest, my most vulnerable, awkward, me. So every now and then, I'd <laughs> randomly laugh out loud. I'd suddenly stop my motion and lose my gaze in the clouds. But don't you dare 
Be worried. Don't you dare. Be filled with dread. Because whenever this happens, I'm in that place. In my head. Fort Abercrombie by Maria Mallow. Man's search for meaning will tell you, all that you are is what can't be taken away. I risked even that when I conspired to snatch back my prison cell time. Even if I'm doing so, I burnt my very skin. I dragged my bones in the sand just to be able to make an indent. Yes, I was intent. It was dire how she came to see me. It was to her, my familiar, whom I exchanged my stolen time. Gently, she folded in my edges, on the way, even let me hold the warmth she carried. I remember mountains and noisy pelting showers, breathing in the musk of blurred trees, wet leaves, until soon enough, my feet clung to carved stone steps, as close as I've ever been to that dividing line, the horizon unmarred. She placed me on her pedestal up at cliff's edge, and there we stayed for a while, just near the world's end. Salt clouded skies to drown in, a sculpt to see dream underneath. She took me here, where I could turn my back, put every single thing behind, for nothing lay before. Now, whenever my rain tears taste of the sea, I go back to that bartered time. She gave me a piece of her mind for nothing but my paltry company. This space cannot be taken away from me. I thank her eternally. Hey guys, I hope you all uh, are all well. Um, my name is Kenroy Melrain, and the story I'll be reading is a story written a few years ago. It's a cockroach and spider story, and this one is entitled Little Ant. I hope you enjoy it. It was hurricane season on the small island that cockroach and spider lived on. They were in their little house preparing for Hurricane Glenroy to come. They had heard over the radio that this was going to be a bad one. One that cockroach and spider had never seen in all of their lives. While getting their fruits and vegetables into their house, cockroach and spider heard a little whimper. But as they really wanted to get in before the hurricane came, they decided to ignore that little whimper. However, as they carried on toward home, the whimper got louder and louder. So they had no choice but to investigate. When they looked in the bushes, they saw a small ant carrying a big leaf on its back. But the ant looked completely exhausted. Cockroach asked, why are you crying, little ant? Little ant said, I was with my family to stock up on food before the hurricane came, but I got lost and now I cannot find my way home. Spider, in a stern voice, said, Oh, sorry about that. We can't help. We're trying to get home before the hurricane came. Cockroach could not believe his ears when he heard Spider's words and looked at him with the sternest look you have ever seen a cockroach give. Cockroach said, of course we can help, little ant. Where was the last place you remember you were with your family? Little ant said, about three rocks back, round the corner by the stream. Spider reluctantly said, okay, let's go back that way to see if your family is there. So little ant, cockroach and spider went three rocks back and around the corner by the stream. When they turned around the corner, who did they see but a flurry of ants frantically searching for something. Cockroach said, hello, are you looking for something or someone? The biggest ant, who we will assume is daddy ant, said, yes, I'm looking for my little ant. Spider said with a broad speak beaming smile, guess who we have here? He then showed Daddy Little Ant. Daddy Ant and Little Ant hugged each other tightly and were very happy to see each other. 
However, by now the hurricane rain was starting to come down and Cockroach and Spider would never make it home. Daddy Ant realised this and said, Thank you very much for bringing back Litter Ant to us. You'll never make it home, so please stay with us until the hurricane passes. Cockroach and Spider accepted the invitation and enjoyed the evening with the Ant family. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you very much for listening. This is Stand and Deliver coming straight to your home. My name is Ruckus and we've been having a fantastic day so far. Thank you so much, Kenroy. That was riveting to say the least. Now, Kenroy is originally from St. Vincent, but he's living out there in the UK. So, Kenroy, thanks for taking part today. Here's a Jamaican living in Indonesia to close things off inside the Stand and Deliver for today. This is just the beginning of the day guys, so you don't want to go anywhere. You want to stay locked on right here because I'm coming back later with some more because we have so much we couldn't just put it in one. We needed two to celebrate Caribbean Literature Day. Wind rush. Wind rushes through my veins. I'm a product of the empire. So I have been told by my government, my education, my religion. Wind rushes through my veins. Though he's dead and gone, his blood and soul lives on. Wind rushes through my veins as I cut cane, pick cotton, and roast coffee. Wind rushes through my veins, even when I choose to forget. Still, I remember Anglin, Francis, Clark, McNeil, my given names. Wind rushes through my veins, standing on the hot Tom Redcomb pavement, boiling in bobby socks and berets to catch a glimpse of the monarchy I have been sworn into. Wind rushes through my veins, stoking my internal fire as I recall stories passed down to me from my forefather. Sir, kindly inform your security officer that yes, one black engineer works here. Like your company's name, I am a thorn in his side, lighting his ignorance every morning. Wind rushes through my veins as my grand uncles and aunties sewed for you, cooked for you, made cabinets and pianos for you so that you could listen to music while sipping your afternoon tea. And now the wind has stopped. Allegedly, admittedly, embarrassingly, an error of admission and omission, digital genocide. History reveals some semblance of independence while echoing weak apologies that try to encourage me to get over it or better yet, or worse yet, move on. Yet, in the year of our Lord, 2018, those who came by ship 70, 80 odd years ago, closer to their end, now being displaced by air. Wind rushes through my veins, washing hot tears that pour down into my breasts. I am fuming at the injustice of it all. You demarcate borders, separating lineage, diluting bloodlines for your own greed. And now that you've had enough, coffee shops in every corner, and rum bars ad nauseum, like a gush of wind, whoosh, you dare to rush us from whence you plucked us to come and fight your wars, killing innocent people on your behalf? Hush, child, my grandmother would say, Memba say, breeze don't only blow in a one direction. And so it is.